Hey folks, good evening to you. It is Louise here and I'm live in the tribe. I think it's, oh, it's one minute to eight, so it's almost eight o'clock. How are you doing? How's your day been? Um, it's been my first day back in the office, um, 2nd of January, and it was a bit of a slow start to the day, I have to say. Um, my, uh, my daughter went back to school today and my son goes back tomorrow, so we're well and truly sort of back uh, into the routine. So who have I got with me this evening? If you're joining, hi Eve, hi Carl, welcome. Let me know that you're here, let me know that you're with me tonight. Um, it was great to have so many of you with me last night and thank you so much for taking the time to join me. And I'm doing a live every night this week to celebrate the launch of my brand new course which is called The Big Life Upgrade. Hi folks, I can see you all joining. Give me a wave, let me know that you're here. Just say hello. Hi Eve, welcome to this live recording. I'm live in the tribe, it's the 2nd of January, so how's your first day back at work, assuming you are back at work? You might not be back for another week or so, and in fact some of the schools don't go back till next week, so it's been a pretty early start for us. And I have to be honest, um, I really wasn't full of enthusiasm this morning, it was a pretty slow start and it really took me time just to kind of get going. Hi there Karen, hi Camilla, welcome, welcome to this live. Great to see so many of you joining. So tonight I'm going to talk about manifesting, one of my favourite topics, um, and a great time to do this, just to give you some inspiration, to give you a boost. I actually think January can be a pretty flat time of year because, the, I said last night, there's this pressure almost to, you know, on the stroke of midnight on, on the New Year's Eve that we need to transform our life, and I think we put an awful lot of pressure on ourselves you know, to make big changes, to radically shake up our life. And actually, I think January isn't the best time to do that. It's a time of reflection and just easing ourselves gently into the new year. Um, so yeah, 2nd of January. Welcome, guys. I can see you all joining. Thank you for being here with me. And tonight I'm going to talk about manifesting. And I'm doing a series of live videos this week. So I did one yesterday and I'm doing one every night up until Friday to celebrate the launch of my brand new course called The Big Life Upgrade, which is really exciting. And I know many of you have already joined The Big Life Upgrade, so I just wanna say hi and welcome to those of you that have already signed up. So tonight I wanna to talk about manifesting. And first of all, what is manifesting? What does it even mean? And quite simply, manifesting is intentionally, intentionally in creating what you want. So you could say manifesting is about goal setting, it's the same thing really, but for me, manifesting is really about tapping into your higher power and manifesting the things that you truly want and deserve, right? So you can goal set, anybody can do that, you can force and shove things into place, into being, but manifesting is tapping into that higher power and really manifesting with purpose and being authentic with it. So there's a slight difference there for me and everybody has the ability to manifest their desires this year in 2018. So it might be you want more cash in your bank. It might be that you want a completely new direction with your career. Um, maybe it's about better health for you or you want to attract more love or you want to move house or have a new car or just have you know, peace of mind. Whatever it is that you would like to manifest this year, it is totally possible. But most of us are taught the old way of goal setting where we have to push and shove things into being. And what I want to bring your attention to is how to manifest, tapping into that higher power, tapping into that innate power that we all have access to. The truth is that we're just not taught this in school, right? We're not taught that we have access to this divine power, whatever you want to call it. Um, and when we do that, our life takes on a new meaning. You know, we have a, a much more fulfilling and rich, rich existence. We live a life of pe pe sort of um, purpose and meaning. So we've got the old fashioned goal setting. I'm not talking about that tonight. What, not, what I want to talk about is manifesting, really manifesting the things that you truly deserve and want this year. Now, my story of manifesting started about 12 years ago after the birth of my daughter. And uh, how can I put this? I was in a place in my life and I was pretty happy at the time, but I lived sort of, um, you know, from one new pair of shoes to the next or from one holiday to the next. There wasn't much depth in my understanding of 
life. Uh, I mean, I was young, I suppose, as well. But what happened for me, it was a friend of mine came bouncing into my office one Monday morning and she was waving a book in my face and she said to me, Lou, Lou you've just got to read this book. It's just mind-blowing. Now, I'd never read a self-help book, can you believe it, at that, up until that point in my life. I'd never read a self-help book at all. You know, I read fiction novels and I read OK Magazine wasn't my bag at all and she was waving this book and she said to me Lou you have to read this and I sort of took this book home and you know I didn't really want to read it you know what it's like when someone says oh you must do this or you must check out this and it sat on my kitchen work surface for a good couple of weeks before I sort of felt guilty and I thought All right, I'll just have a quick flick through it and then I'll hand it back job done hi Heather hi Barbara I can see lots of you joining hi Emma welcome so I'm just talking about manifesting, manifesting your true desires for 2018. I was just explaining how I came to really understand the power of manifesting. So this book landed in my life and literally within the first couple of pages, this book, oh, I, I, can't, I can't even tell you, it, it just blew my world apart. It, it sort of opened a door into a world that I didn't even know existed. And the book, by the way, if anybody's curious, was called Excuse Me, Your Life is Waiting. It's an old book now. It was written oh, in the 90s at some point. Um, but it opened me up to the possibility that we are more than just flesh and bones. And this started, it was a catalyst for massive change in my life because I started to learn more about manifesting and the law of attraction, how we can manifest our desires by changing our thinking. And this set me on a path to really exploring this and becoming a scientist, I suppose, in my own life. And that's exactly what I did. So hi, Sarah. Hi, Carol. I can see you all joining. Welcome to this live. So I became a scientist in my own life. And what I started to do was apply the tools and techniques that I had been learning. Um, and I didn't tell anyone I was doing this. It was a bit of a secret at the time. But I started sort of doing these daily practices and, and trying out these different tools and techniques that were, were shared within this book. And very quickly, things started to change. In fact, it was quite a rapid change when I look back. Um, and I realised that these things do actually work. These techniques that I'd been applying actually were making changes in my life. And it was a huge turning point. Within 18 months, in fact, I'd left my day job. I'd started a business. I was writing my first book. You know, things were radically different for me. Um, and I've been a huge advocate ever since. So ever since that first book, it was a, a whole sort of um, new world for me. And since then, I've read books, oh my God, on, on all sorts of topics from real woo-woo stuff to stuff on neuroscience and psychology and quantum physics, which sort of blew my head off. And it's brought me to this place in my life. And I believe, you know, I feel I've created some fantastic things. And I'm just committed to sharing with other people how to tap into this power so that you too can create the things that you want in your life. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Debbie. Welcome to this Facebook Live. So I want to talk a little bit about how to get the law of attraction or how to get manifesting working for you this year. Now, this probably isn't the first time that you've looked at this or tried to use manifesting or the law of attraction. The fact is, there are some steps that we need to follow and I want to share them with you tonight so that you can start applying them, start becoming your own scientist in your life. So step number one, the first thing that I want you to think about is to get clear on what it is that you would like to manifest this year. What are your goals? What are your desires and intentions for this year? Now, I'm sure you've thought about this, right? You know, we're all here and thinking about New Year's resolutions, although I'm not a big fan of New Year's resolutions, but we're all sort of starting to think about the year ahead and the things that we would like to create for ourselves. So step one in this journey to manifesting your desires this year is to get clear on what it is you actually want. So think about the different areas of your life. It could be, you know, it's, it's your work life that needs your attention right now. It could be your love life. It could be you need more money in your bank account. You need to create more cash. It could be that you need to work on your health. It could be a multitude of things, right? What I want you to do is to get really clear. And what I don't want you to do is to try and set goals that are too far out there into the future. So think about what is achievable within the near future. So we're talking about within the next six to 12 months. So that is step one, pretty obvious, right? Pretty basic, get clear on what it is that you want. And a really nice thing to do, and in actual fact, you know what, I was doing this this evening, I sat down and wrote my Dear Universe letter for the year ahead. 
So I wrote a letter, if you like, to the universe or to myself, stating all of the things that I wanted assistance with, the things that I wanted to release from my life, and most importantly, the things that I wanted to bring into my life, the things I wanted to manifest. So a Dear Universe letter is a declaration, right? It's a declaration to the universe. It's a declaration to yourself the things that you are committed to changing this year. Now, a Dear Universe letter, obviously you can write it in a journal or you can write it on a, you know, handwriting It's a great thing to do, I believe. And writing it down, um, handwritten, you can either post it to yourself, so you can post it out to the universe and it will obviously come back to you a few days later. Um, and there's something in that letting go and releasing that is really powerful. But my favourite, favourite, favourite thing to do with a Dear Universe letter is to plant it in the garden. So not the right time of year for me to be planting maybe, but to actually bury it in the soil. So you're releasing it to the universe because nature does its thing, right? I planted some bulbs back in August, um, September time. And I started to see the shoots yesterday when I looked outside, these little snowdrops were sort of poking their way through the soil. We don't doubt nature. Nature does its thing, right? We we know that every year that the trees will blossom, that the daffodils will come up, the crocuses will come up. We trust in that process. Yet when it comes to allowing the universe to assist us, we don't trust in that process. We We, we tinker and we get involved and we try and push things before they're ready. So by writing a Dear Universe letter, by planting it in the soil, we release it, we let go, we say to the universe, I trust in this process, yeah, I trust in this process. So your number one step to manifesting what you truly want this year is to first of all get clear on your intentions, your goals, what you want to manifest, whatever you want to call it. Write a dear universe letter or just write your goals down and then do something with them, either post them, release them, or you could bury them in the garden, um, you know, along with a plant maybe, or some seeds that will come up in the spring. Now, here is the next step. Step number two. Hi there, Faye, who else has just joined? I'm having a look. Heather, hi Heather. Hi Debbie, welcome. Welcome to this Facebook Live. So tonight we're talking about manifesting and I'm doing a series of videos to celebrate the launch of my brand new course called The Big Life Upgrade. And tonight's topic is about manifesting, one of my favourite topics. So I'm just running through some steps for those of you that have just joined. Five or four rather very clear steps that you need to take in order to become a master at manifesting. And remember, manifesting is about tapping into that power, you know, really working on goals that are in alignment to your blueprint and your purpose. So second step. So number one, write your dear universe letter, get super clear. Step two is about raising your vibrations. Do you know what? Most people do not even get past step one. So, you know, we, we think about the things that we want and then we get so bogged down with what's not working that it all falls apart at step one. Not many of us ever really get to the step two, step three and step four. So step two is about raising your vibrations. Now, quite simply, this is about getting happy. So rather than obsessing about, oh, the goal hasn't manifested yet or nothing's happening or he hasn't phoned or I haven't had a reply yet, rather than obsessing about it's not happening quick enough, just get happy. So get focused on the here and now. Do stuff that makes you feel good. Mix with people that lift you up. You know, create a daily practice of meditation. Do stuff that just makes you feel good. Have a daily kitchen disco if that makes you feel good. Um, we've recently hooked our house up to Alexa and the kids, you know, we now shout, hey Alexa, you know, play you know, whatever song. And it's just brilliant because it's adding life back into our home and we just have fun with it and dance around. It's been fantastic. So you need to raise your vibes in whatever way works for you. So raise your vibes, do stuff that makes you feel good. Get out in nature, get grounded, get your feet in the earth. It might be, it's a bit cold to be doing that now, but get out there into the world because the more you raise your vibrations, and I promise you this, the more you learn to feel good and stay there as best you can, the quicker your the things that you want to manifest will come into your life. The opportunities, the people, the ideas, the solutions that you are seeking to take you to your goal, the quicker they will come about. But you, it is your responsibility to get happy. It's a decision that you have to make. 
the truth is many of us are happy to wallow in and self-pity. I do this too. I'm not perfect by any stretch. You know, many of us give up too soon. We self-sabotage, you know, we trip ourselves up. Your job, if you truly are committed to creating an amazing year and working on those things that you want to manifest, you need to raise your vibes and you need to figure out what makes you feel good and commit to doing that. A daily appointment with yourself, if you want to call it that. So that is the second step. Hi, Linda. Hi, Martine. How are you doing? Welcome. So let's move on to step three. So step one, get super clear. Write that Dear Universe letter for the year ahead. Step two, get happy. It sounds so simple, but the more present you are, the more stuff you do to make you feel happier, the quicker the things that you want will come into your life. This is the secret and this is the key. The third step then, and this is the hard bit, even I find this hard, is to let go and let the universe work its magic. You do not want to be, when you plant your seeds in the autumn, checking every couple of weeks to see whether they've shooted or blossomed. I mean, that's just crazy, right? You have to let go. And this is the bit I think most of us really struggle with, me included, letting go and trusting in that process, trusting in nature to do its thing, right? It's a hard thing to do. I'm not saying that this is easy, but you need to stop obsessing about it hasn't happened yet. Or when your thoughts start turning negative, right? And you're thinking about, oh, I need to do that. Or maybe I should just push it along a little bit just to stop. And remember that the universe has your back. It is in hand. You need to be patient. And your only job is to just get happy and look out for the signs and signals along the way, because this is what's going to happen. You're going to set your intentions if you haven't already. You're going to work on getting happy, creating a daily practice, doing stuff that makes you feel good. And this is what's going to happen. If you're aware enough, right, if you're awake enough, what's going to happen is you're going to start to notice um, opportunities, small ones, albeit to begin with. Ideas are going to pop into your head. You're going to be in the shower one day and you're just going to get a fantastic idea. Now, if you don't kill the idea and you're willing to take a bit of action, then that's going to lead on to something else and that will lead on to something else. The fact is, you know, no one's going to knock on your door tomorrow and go, ta-da, here's the goal that you wanted. Here's your manifestation manifestation in full form the way that it works is one small nugget at a time and you have to be awake enough and in a, in a high enough vibe in order to get that guidance and to know when the guidance is coming through right you only really truly know when you're feeling good when the guidance comes through you know you feel it feels good it feels right and you can take that next step so the third step is to let go and just sit back and watch out for the signs and the signals that the universe will provide. And it might be, it might not seem, you know, it might seem a bit, um, a bit of a, a strange action maybe. You might get a nudge to speak to somebody. Do you know today, and I'll share this with you, and I, I cried over this actually, um, I was sitting in my meditation pillow. I'll just show you this actually. If you haven't seen this, this is my meditation pillow and I sit on this at least once a day on the floor. And I was there today, and as I sat there, this thought popped into my head. Um, and at the top of my shelf, you can't see it from here, there's an old 70s cookbook that my mother-in-law gave me in my early 20s when I was first, well, I first moved in with my husband. And I got this intuitive nudge to bring it off the shelf. And it was, you know, I didn't know why, I didn't know why that had popped into my head. But I opened this 70s cookbook and out fell some recipes that my nan, who's in her mid 90s now, had written for me 20 odd years ago. Um, and these were recipes she used to cook for me as a kid and I'd lost them. I'd lost those recipes. And when I saw them and I saw her handwriting and bless her heart, she's got dementia now. So it's it's quite sad, really, because you know she's not the woman that I remember her being and it's it's you know it's life I suppose but out fell these recipes and I just sobbed because I'd lost them and I was so thrilled to find them again and you know to see her handwriting and you know the method that she'd written out and it was just it was just truly a lovely moment now that intuitive nudge came through because um, I'd let go I was meditating I was in the zone and that's when the guidance comes through. So the third step is to let go and then listen. 
listen for that daily guidance listen you know and watch out for the signals and signs that the universe will give you it will they're there it's just you have to be awake enough to notice them now the fourth step then is about taking that inspired action so let's just recap for a second so for those of you that have just joined hi lisa welcome the first step is to get clear on what you want this year so really focus on the areas of your life that need your attention right now and please don't be too don't don't set goals that are so massive that you end up self-sabotaging be realistic about it where do you want to be in six months in 12 months time don't go beyond that just think about the short term so get clear on your intentions for the year ahead raise your vibration so get happy the higher your vibes the quicker these things will manifest into your life or the quicker the, the clues and the signs and the signals are going to manifest in your life the third thing is about letting go probably the hardest part of this process and to listen out for the signs and signals because they're there honestly they are there you just have to be in a high enough vibe in order to recognize those signs and the final step in this process is to take inspired action so last night i was talking about pushing action you know pushing things into being before they were re before they're ready and inspired action which is where there's a, a sort of an intuitive knowing that it's the right thing where there's a feeling of ease and grace so inspired action is inspired action right it's action that feels good and if it feels good then you know you are on the right path to the things that you want to manifest so these are four steps four very simple steps as i said most people don't get past step one um, but this year things are going to change and I want you to see if you can work through these steps of so getting happy, letting go, creating that daily practice where you can tap in and hear the signs and the signals. So I want to, you to try a little experiment. So for those of you that might be sort of sitting there and you might be sort of, you know, doubting this higher power or, you know, you might be a bit, you know, reticent about it. What I'd like you to try is my 24 hour manifesting experiment. And this is very, very straightforward and very simple. What you're going to do is ask the universe for some kind of sign, some kind of signal within the next 24 hours, something that has to have come from something greater than you. So you're going to ask for some kind of sign that can be delivered to you so that when it comes, you know that it has to have come from something greater than you. Now, you're not going to dictate what that is. You're going to leave that up to the universe. So you're going to just put it out there and see what comes back to you. So this is a sign that's going to show you that there is a guiding force, that there is a power that you can tap into, that you do have the ability to manifest. So it's a 24 hour manifesting experiment where you just cast it out there and you say, dear universe, send me a sign, a sign that is so unmistakable that I know it has to have come from you. So for those doubters out there, try it, see what comes back and maybe you can share with us tomorrow evening. Now, I've got some do's and don'ts before I wrap up this call. So I've gone through the steps with you um, and I want to just run through the, these do's and don'ts. So I'm just looking at my notes now. So first thing, do's, these are do's, right, is to be patient. Be patient about this. So don't force things to happen before they are ready because that is futile. So just be patient, be easy about all of this because it will happen when you're lined up and you're ready to receive it, right? And that's your job is to get happy, raise your vibes, to line up with the things that you want to manifest. Do's keep your vibes high. So we've talked about this. Keep your vibes high by getting out in nature, by meditating, by practicing Reiki if you're into that tapping whatever makes you feel good and start off with manifesting small things start off with that experiment that 24 hour um, manifesting experiment start there and then build up from there because what you want to do is build up that trust and faith that it's there for you you can manifest there is this higher power you can tap into and the final do is you need to show up every day if you are truly committed to changing your life then you've got to put the effort in because here's the thing if you are inconsistent with the universe, the results you get back are going to be inconsistent. We have to show up every day and whether that's, you know, for five minute meditation practice or a 10 minute yoga practice, whatever it may be, we have to show up because then there'll be, will be more consistent results coming back into our life. Now, here's some don'ts that you want to be thinking about. Obviously, don't give up too soon. So I've spoken about this. Don't give up too soon because so many of us give up just before the miracle. So don't give up. Be patient with this. 
um, and just focus on the things that make you feel good, get happy and wait for those signs and signals to come. Um, and the, the other don't is don't tell too many people about this, right? Keep your light under a bushel, one of my favourite sayings. And, you know, I love to do that. I love to work on a manifestation and not tell anybody or tell very few people. And then when it manifests into my life, I can kind of go, ta-da! And then everybody can see it. You know, they can see that manifest. And they're like, wow, how did you do that? And, and oh, you know, what is it that you know that I don't know? So just keep your light under a bushel. Please don't share it with too many people, especially when it comes to this topic, because most people don't believe in this magic. Most people don't believe that there is a higher power. So just, you know, keep your light under a bushel. And finally, don't expect other people to get this, right? You need to become the scientist in your life. You need to lead by example. You know, let the things manifest in your life and then other people will see that. And that's the best way to do this. Don't try and convince other people. Don't try and, and try and get them to get it because they won't. And everybody's on their own path. Everybody evolves at their own pace, right? And one big fact that I want you to know, <laughs> you cannot manifest for another. You can only manifest for you, for yourself. You cannot manifest for your partner, for your child, for, you know, for your friend, for your mother, your father. You can only manifest for you. Yeah, and that's hard sometimes because we want to kind of go in and rescue our children when they're in pain or when they're upset about something. We can only lead by example. We can only help them by showing them you know, the results in our own lives. So please, please, please remember that you cannot manifest for another. Now, I want to leave you with some, I don't know whether you'd call them affirmations, I'm not sure, but questions, I don't know, whatever you want to call them. But these are two things and you want to write these down and I want you, if you have some post-it notes, to write them on some post-it notes and I maybe, maybe pop them around your house. So maybe by the kettle's a good place, especially if you live in my house. Uh, we drink a lot of tea, maybe in your office, maybe on your car dashboard. And what you're going to write is two questions. Number one, you're going to write, what is possible for me this year? What is possible for me this year? And the second question is, what is my next best move? What is my next best move? Now, the reason I'm getting you to write these down and the reason I want you to pop them around your home or in your car or whatever is these are very open questions. So when you ask, ask questions like this, you are reaching to a, a higher state of consciousness. You are reaching higher in order to seek the answer. Your brain is fantastic at finding answers to questions. Most of us aren't asking the right questions of ourselves. So we're saying, well, why does this keep happening to me? And why have I never got any money? And why does he keep treating me like this? And the only place your brain can go with those kind of closed questions, unfortunately, is into the filing cabinet in your brain of woe is me and all the negative stuff that you know has happened in your life. It can't go anywhere other than into the filing cabinet of, of shit, right? So... You want to ask open questions, open framed questions like what is possible for me right now this year? What is my life purpose is a great one or what is my next best move? Two super powerful questions. And if you start asking these questions every single day, honestly, you watch what happens because your brain is designed to go out there and find answers. So if you're asking every day, what's my next best move? Think about this. If you're asking every day, what is my next best move? What is my next best move? You're going to get ideas. You're going to get thoughts pop into your head. You're going to become more intuitive by asking these kind of questions. So post-it note, write these questions down. So what is possible for me? And what is my next best move? If you just ask these questions as you move throughout the months and move throughout the year, you watch what happens and then you can act upon those actions, those intuitive ideas, those nudges that come to you. So just to, I know some of you have just joined. Hi and welcome to those of you that have just joined. Thank you for joining me this evening. So tonight I'm talking about manifesting um, and in celebration of my brand new course, The Big Life Upgrade, I'm doing a series of live videos this year, just offering some wisdom, some guidance, 
um, some motivation to kickstart your year. And tonight I'm talking about tapping into your higher power so that you can manifest the things that you truly want and deserve. So whether that is a better job this year, you want a new car, you want uh, to move house, you want to attract more love, you want to increase your health and become healthier or fitter or lose weight, whatever it may be, it's all possible. And I believe that when you tap into that higher power, so rather than just old fashioned goal setting where we, you know, we set our goals or news resolutions and we push and shove and try and make things happen. There's a difference because manifesting is about goal setting, but it's also about tapping into that higher power, leveraging that higher power so that we can manifest with greater ease as we move through the year. So I've just been sharing some steps that you can take like creating a Dear Universe letter, raising your vibes, taking inspired action, and to try a little experiment, a 24 hour manifesting experiment, certainly for those of you that maybe doubt that there is this higher power or doubt your ability to manifest, a 24 hour experiment where you can say to the universe or whatever it is that you believe in, give me a sign, show me a sign that is so unmistakable, it has to have come from something greater than me. So a fantastic experiment to just boost or bolster your faith in this process yeah because we are all we all have magic at our fingertips it's just that we don't believe it and in actual fact I don't know whether Barbara's on the on the um on the this live tonight but Barbara's one of my clients from a while back and she sent me a, a placard from her from her business um she made placards at the time and it says those that don't believe in magic will never find it it was by Roald Dahl is by Roald Dahl. So those that don't believe in magic will never find it. And it's one of my favourite, favourite quotes. And I just so believe this because we do have magic at our fingertips and we are all able to manifest the things that we desire if we are just willing to believe and put the effort in really, you know, creating a daily practice, for example. So anything else that I want to share with you? Ah, yeah, I've written here. This is funny. I was writing my notes today and I put... <laughs> Remember to mention that we are all work in progress. And this is such an important thing because do you know what? I'm you, I, I might teach this stuff, right? Yeah, I might you know, write books on the topic and that kind of thing, but I'm just like you, I'm on this path and I'm evolving just like you are and I'm learning just like you are. And I'm, you know, I make mistakes too. And I have negative days where I wake up and I just wanna hide under the duvet and I don't wanna face the world. And actually waking up this morning on the 2nd of January, felt a bit like that back in the routine we got up at six o'clock and it was the middle of the night it was horrible so I just want you to know that we're all in this together you know we're all on this journey of life we're all playing the game of life together right and you know just keep going keep taking the steps keep moving forward because it, we are all work in progress now I just want to answer one question um, from Tracy. I don't know if you're on the on the. I don't know whether you're there, Tracy. This is a question that she emailed to me earlier about finding it hard to visualise. So I talk a lot about creative visualisation and actual fact when it comes to manifesting your desires, a fantastic way to reshape your thinking to create new neural pathways in your brain is to actually use creative visualization basically your imagination to visualize the life that you're wanting to create so whether that is a, a different job or a house that you're wanting to manifest or love or whatever it may be so i just want to answer your question tracy because i know that you talked about finding it hard to visualize especially when you're feeling low or feeling negative and here's the thing that i want you to remember is that when you're using creative visualization, you don't want to go too far into the future. So you want to be visualizing your life, you know, three months into the future, six months, maybe a push 12 months into the future. Don't go too far ahead because I think if we visualize three years down the road, it can be really unbelievable and really, really difficult. So just keep it short term. Think about small things that you want to manifest in your life. And you want to just, Imagine being the movie director to your life. This is the way that I do it. So imagine closing your eyes and as the movie director, you have full say over what plays the image, what the images are that you're imagining. So the movie director, and you can play little snippets of the life that you're trying to create, but keep it short term, keep it quite, you know, three months, six months is more than enough. And you want to make it as real as possible by adding emotion into that visualization, right? So you want to imagine how it would feel to be 
you know, uh, living in that new house or imagine how it would feel to be sharing your life with somebody. You know, visualise some of the things that you might be doing with that person or if it's a new job, you know, visualise, you know, that, that money coming into your bank account or visualise how it would feel to get the acknowledgement, um, you know, from a colleague or a boss or whatever. So creative visualisation has been a go-to tool for me um, throughout the years and Yes, so just keep it short term. I hope this helps um, answer your question. Keep it shorter term and, and play little snippets of the things that you're trying to create in different areas of your life. Everybody can visualise, um, but if it doesn't feel good, um, then try a different snippet of the movie until it does feel good. So play around with this and don't keep visualising the same things over and over again because it gets boring, right? You want to keep it fresh. So think about being a movie director and hopefully that will help you. Now, has anybody else got any questions about manifesting, about goal setting, um, anything for the new year? Now's your time to just post. I did see a question earlier, actually. Um, let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, some lovely comments. Uh, so Heather was saying, excuse me, your life is waiting. Um, was also my first self. Oh, wow, was it? So you read that book as well. Fantastic. Have we got any other questions? I've lost them now. I can't see them. Okie dokie. Well, if you, any other questions, let me know. And if I don't get them in time before I hang up tonight, then you can obviously post them in the comments. And I can pick them up tomorrow and I can answer them in tomorrow night's live. Uh, how is it possible not to doubt if it's not happening? Yeah, it's really hard, Camilla, when things aren't happening. Um, you know, as fast as you want or you're not getting the signs and signals. So if that's the case, then you just want to... I always find when I'm feeling frustrated or things aren't happening as fast as I want that it's time for me to take a bit of time out, to change my focus, to divert my attention to something else. So that might be taking a soak in the bath or it might be going to see somebody, just taking my energy away from the thing that's bothering me, right? And getting more present and in the now moment because the truth is the more present you are, the faster things are going to change for you because most people are future tripping or they're obsessing about things that they should have done or could have done in the past. The key really to raising your vibes is to get present in the now moment. OK, so if you're feeling negative, things aren't happening as fast as you want. See if you can bring your attention to the now moment, because that's where you reclaim your power right in the present moment. And to be present, I mean, you know, going out in nature helps you to become more present for sure. You know, getting outside or just doing something where you're just focusing on that one thing. Being present is the secret to transcending that negativity. So hopefully that helps. Do you have to visualise every day to manifest? Uh, well, I'll tell you what I do, Christine. I visualise as I fall to sleep at night. So if it, maybe it's a bit lazy, I don't know. Or I'll visualise at the beginning of a meditation. So... I, do I do it every day? Yes, I probably do. But do you have to? Probably not. But you just want to make it part of your weekly practice, of, of, of your daily practice if you can. Um, the fact is it feels good to visualise and I tend to do it as I'm falling to sleep at night because it's a great way to fall asleep, isn't it? Visualising the things that you want to create. So yeah, um, that's how I do it anyway. Or I do it at the beginning of uh, a meditation. Yeah, so let's have a look at something else. What happens if you can't visually see anything when you are trying to visualise? It's different for everybody. Who's oh, Hi, Kim. Hi, Kim. So, yeah, it's different for everybody. I think I mentioned last night, if I said to you, Kim, what's the colour of your front door? Um, you would have to kind of think it's black, it's red, it's blue. And that is visualisation in motion. That's you visualising just by thinking about your front door or the colour of your kitchen cabinets, right? You're using visualisation to help you to pull up that colour, to see that colour, to tell me what the colour of your front door is. So it's different for everybody. And some people don't visualise in colour, some people do. It's just about closing your eyes and using your imagination. It's, it's a natural ability that we all have. So don't overanalyze this. Don't overthink this. You can visualize, Kim. I know you can. You just want to close your eyes and just like a child imagining, you know, their wish list, you know, for Christmas, for example. OK, right. Any other questions? I'm just having a look. So I use energy data. 
So, uh, so, 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 hi, so we've got, uh, so are you saying that if you don't know what you want, some signs may come? Yes, I'm absolutely saying that because sometimes we don't know what we want, right? Sometimes we, you know, we start a new year and we're not sure about, you know, um, what our goals are going to be or what we want to manifest. Maybe it's, you know, a job and you don't know what that job's going to look like. You wanted to change jobs, for example. So absolutely, if you don't know what you don't want, that's even better because, in actual fact, you're wide open. You're letting the universe work its magic. So that's a good thing, I would say. So yes, all you want to do, if you're not sure about what it is specifically that you want to create, then you just want to get happy. You want to have a daily practice of meditation and then listen out for the signs and signals. And I think what will happen as you go through your year, the clarity is going to start coming. Yes, the clarity will come. So hopefully that answers your question. Have we got any more? Let's have a quick flick back, see if there's any more questions. Okay. Okay. Any tips on letting go? What a brilliant question. Love this one. Yeah, letting go. And as I said earlier, it's probably one of the hardest things, right, for us to actually learn to let go, especially when something's really important to us. Yeah. Um, and, and we're desperately wanting to sort of seek a, a result or a solution. Letting go is hard and certainly been my big life lesson. So for me, letting go, and, and this is maybe a topic for another night, when I'm finding that I'm gripped by negative emotion, I tend to use a lot of tapping. I don't know whether you're familiar with EFT tapping, but oh my goodness, it's a powerful technique when you're in the grip of negativity and fear. Um, maybe I'll put some links below and you can go and check out some, some demos of people tapping. Both my kids couldn't sleep last night. And the reason being is that we've been getting up late, going to bed really early, and they knew they'd got school in the morning and they were stressing. I could feel their anxiety. Uh, and I went into their bedrooms and I tapped on my son. And as, as he was telling me about his worries and, you know, you know what he was worried about his spellings, and I was tapping on him as he was relaxing to help him to go to sleep. And I often do this with the kids, but actually it's a fantastic tool to use on yourself when you're feeling in the grip of negativity and you're trying to let go of an emotion, for example. And in terms of letting go, write a dear universe letter. Brilliant, a brilliant thing to do when you're feeling like you're finding it hard to let go. Write a dear universe letter, you know, ask for assistance in letting go and then let the letter go by posting it or burying it or doing whatever you feel. Burn the letter maybe if that feels good. Um, so hopefully that helps you. A couple of tips on how to let go. Okay, anything else? I think I've covered all the ones. Okay, I think we've got, I think I've covered everything so far. But I can always answer them tomorrow. So guys, listen, I hope tonight's live has helped you think about what you want to manifest. And remember, the most important message tonight is this is not goal setting. This is not about setting New Year's resolutions. This is about manifesting. And manifesting for me is about tapping into that higher power, setting your goals and intentions, and then learning to tap in because this is what's going to create truly an amazing year for you. So follow some of the steps that I've shared with you tonight. Now, for those of you that have enjoyed this live and found it beneficial and useful, the Big Life Upgrade has just launched. So this is a 12 month online coaching program. It's the first time I've done a course like this in a long, long, long time. So this is a 12 month course where every month we cover a different topic. So every month you will get access to a classroom hub and you can go and watch a series of videos and there's downloadable exercises and a monthly creative visualization or a monthly exercise, a meditation exercise. So every month we cover something new. So for example, in January, we're talking about take, taking stock, setting your goals and intentions for the new year. In February, we're going to be talking about literally clearing the clutter from your life, whether that be physical clutter, emotional clutter, spiritual clutter, whatever it may be that's holding you back. And as we move through the year, we've got other topics like financial freedom, how to kind of get out of debt, how to clear your debt, how to save and become financially free. We're going to talk about love and the art of true connection and stepping into the now and more and more about manifesting as well. So 
if you'd like to join the big life upgrade i would love to see you over there lots of people have already signed up which has been thrilling i'm so excited to share this content with you so i'm going to put a link in a minute so you can go and just have a look at what's on offer see what it's all about and for anybody that signs up tonight that was on this live so anybody that was on this live tonight that's been watching me live um, and signs up and pays in full for the course so you can either pay monthly and it's 25 quid a month so it's really affordable or if you want to pay up front you can you get two months free so for anybody that pays up front in full i'm going to post you out a gift box and in that gift box well actually no i'm not going to tell you but there's my books are in there but there's also some other lovely little bits and bobs that i'm going to put in there for you and it's a present from me to you to welcome you into the big life upgrade but also to just say I appreciate you and it's just hey it's nice to get a gift in the post isn't it so for anybody that signs up tonight pays in full you're going to get a gift box in the post and we're sending them out next week so if you sign up tonight that's what's going to happen so I'm going to put a link in a second so that you can find out more about the big life upgrade thank you so much for joining me what time is it wow 45 minutes that's just gone like a shot thank you so much for being with me tonight now tomorrow night I can't remember what the topic is tomorrow night I've written it down somewhere but I'm going to send you an email I'll put a post in the tribe to let you know what tomorrow night's topic is I think it might be about money about making more money managing your money that kind of thing so anyway I'll post and let you know what it's about so hopefully you guys will be able to join me tomorrow for some more inspiration so thank you so much for joining me tonight I'm off to have a cup of tea uh, and I'll see you soon goodbye guys see you soon bye